So we're going to be learning how to make a little sliding reveal button. It's a really nice way of um, having text on the page but not having the text showing all the time. It's in this little drawer. If I just click up here, um, you can see that that slides down and then tucks itself back away again, um, like so. Very neat little trick, looks very slick. So how do we create this? Well, it's quite straightforward. I'm just going to close down um, iBooks, which is my EPUB reader, and we're going to go back into um, InDesign. And this is where we're going to start. Now you can see I've got an, an image on the page and I've got this text box, which I've already set up um, with some type in it. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to make a clear frame um, over the area that I want to be clickable. So I'm just going to make my clear frame sit here. Now you'll notice that I've just made it a little bit wider than the, um, the text box. So basically, if you click ever so slightly outside of that area, it will still fall within um, the clickable region because this whole um, box is going to be the button. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the um, selection tool and shift select the text box. So I've now got the um, the new box, which is going to be my button, my new frame, and the text frame, and I'm going to group them together. And to do that, I'm going to right click and choose group. So they are now a group. And then I'm going to copy. Um, I'm going to use menus because I think it's very confusing when people are busy using keyboard shortcuts um, and you're trying to follow a video. So I'm going to use um, the menus um, to give you more of a visual clue of what, what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to go to edit and choose copy and then we're going to choose paste in place twice so I've done that once and I do it for a second time so I've now got three versions of that little group and if I go over to my layers panel over here you can see those three groups now you'll notice that I've already named this um, uh, folder here and this layer MSO now you might see it as something called text so if you want to, you can change its name. Now MSO stands for multi-state object, um, which this is eventually going to be. So um, if you want to change that, do it now. Okay, now I've got these three groups and what I want to do is I want to move the position of two of them. So I'm going to um, move these two to a starting point. Now, the easiest way to do that is to hold down the shift key and shift select the second group. Can you see how I've now got these two little lights on? Yeah? Um, so this group and this group are now selected. So I can um, pick these up and move them. And you'll notice I can move them anywhere I like. But if I hold the shift key, it will constrain it so they only move um, vertically when I move them up like so. And I just want to move it so the text is just off the screen. Oops. like so. Okay, so I've got one down here and I've got two up here, like so. I'm now going to select all three groups. So again, I'm going over to my layers panel and I'm going to shift select that third group. So I've now got all three selected and I'm going to make them into something called an object state and um, sometimes referred to as a multi-state. So um, these are multi-state objects. So I've opened the object states panel and I'm creating a new state and I'm going to call this um, Bangkok MSO and I'm going to change each of the state names. Um, I'm going to call this one start and this one, you notice it didn't move, so I'm going to call it end and this one which is in its original position, is going to be the one in the middle. So I'm going to call that one middle. Okay, and I'm going to just pick up the start state. And then I'm going to go to the layers menu. And on if I open up Bangkok MSO, you can see it says start. And I want just the little rectangle that's going to be the button. So I'm just going to select that. And I've selected it off the 
layers panel. That way I know I've got exactly the right thing selected. Okay, and I'm going to go to um, the buttons and forms panel. I'm going to add an action and the action I'm going to add is go to state. And I'm going to um, use um, the object as Bangkok MSO, obviously, and the uh, state that I want to go to is middle. Okay, so that's what that button is going to do. It's going to take me to the middle state. Then if I hit the escape key a couple of times, it will take me back to the parent MSO. So when I go back to the object states um, menu, I can then choose um, the next state, which is end. Go back to layers again, twirl those out, click on that little rectangle again, add a button and form to this, actions, still go to state, and again it's going to be to middle. Okay, hit escape again, and object states, this time I'm going to middle, and this one, we roll it out, choose that rectangle again, buttons and forms, and this time I'm going to go to state, and I'm going to go to end, like so. And if I wanted to preview that, and I've been struggling with my preview showing way too small, so chances are that's not going to work for you either. No, it's not marvellous. Let me just see if I can get this to unwind a bit. No idea why that's miss. Ah, there we are. It's just being a bit of a pain. There we go. So I've managed to pull that down. And now when I click on my button, you can see that it sort of does what we want, but we haven't got that nice kind of smooth rollout. Um, it's kind of pinging backwards and forwards rather harshly. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to add a little bit of animation. Um, and um, that's reasonably simple, but you do have to pay attention to what, what it is that you're doing. So I'm just going to shut this down. Um, once again, I want to choose the parent MSO, so I've just hit escape again a couple of times, and I'm going to go to the object states panel, and I'm going to choose middle, okay? And I want to select both parts of this on the layers panel. Like so. So I've got both bits, the button and the text. And I'm going to go to the animation panel this time. And I'm going to use a preset. I'm going to use a fly in from top. And I'm animating to the current location. I don't want any opacity change, so I'm going to change that to none. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the timing panel. I'm going to pick up both of those buttons because I uh, both of those boxes because I want them to animate at the same time so I've selected them both by shift clicking each of them and then I click on this little button here where it says play together and you'll see that it's kind of linked these two elements um, together okay once again um, I hit escape to get back to the parent MSO and um, so that was middle so this time we're going to go to end and I'm going to add the same kind of animation. So I'm picking up the, the two elements that I want to animate. Go to animation, choose, this time I'm going to fly in from bottom to current location, no opacity change. And I'm going to go to timing. and group those together like so. So now if I click my little preview button, and let's see how this looks. 
that's much better. Okay, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so that's how you create a little sliding reveal button in Adobe InDesign.